Well, hello there, lovely one. In this question, we need to find the equation of a cubic function. And we're given the general equation, and we're shown that m and n are the values that are missing. We're also told that 2, negative 3 is the turning point. Now, the fact that they've told us that it's the turning point means we should already be thinking about making the derivative equal to 0, because as you know, the turning point, which is also called the stationary point, uh, is where the gradient of the tangent of the line is equals to zero, and that's because <laughs> it's parallel to the excess axis. Can you tell that that is parallel to that? No, because I've gone all squiff, but you get the general idea. So in order to use this point effectively, we need to first find the derivative. So I'm going to do the correct notation and find the derivative. 3 times m is going to be 3m, and it's going to be x squared. Then 2 times 3 is going to be minus 6x, and then this is to the power of 1. 1 times 12 is going to be negative 12, and then it's x to the power of 0, which means it's 1, which means we don't have to write it down. But this is quite interesting now. Did you know that n actually does have an x, but x is to the power of 0? So 0 times n gives us nothing. So that's why we don't have anything for the constant that was once there. Fun fact number 1. Okay, now at the turning point, the derivative will equal to 0. Now the turning point is going to be at an x-coordinate. I just had to think about how to say that, which means we have the value of x. And that is a lovely thing, because if we have the value of x and we're able to make the derivative equal to 0, we're actually able to solve for m quite easily. So let's see what we can do. 2 squared is going to be 4, 4 times 3 is 12, so that's 12m. And then minus 6 times 2 is going to be minus 12, how's that? Then minus 12 again. Okay, so minus 12 plus minus 12 is going to be minus 24. I'm going to take it over to the other side, where it doesn't change what it is, it changes what it's doing. And minus 24 on this side was minusing, so when we took it over, it added. Now we've got 24 is equals to 12m. Therefore, I'm sure you can all see that m is equals to 2. We found the value of m, but that's not the whole question, is it? We still need to find the value of n. And how can we do this? Well, the only way we can factor in its change color, so we can see it's a different train of thought. The only way we can use the y-coordinate and the x-coordinate in the same calculation is if we look at the function. Why? Because f of x has the same value as y, then x has the same value as 2. So let's write out, first let's do this, we'll write out the function with the value of m, because that'll just make it look easier in the next step. Minus 3 x squared minus 12 x plus n. And now we'll tell everyone what we're doing. And it is really important that you constantly write down, what am I doing next? So that your marker, whoever it may be, can follow your train of thought. So we're going to substitute that into f, so it'll be negative 3 is equals to 2, 2 cubed, minus 3, 2 squared, minus 24, times by 2, plus n. Okay, you do have a calculator to do this, but I'm too lazy to get mine out. Oh, that line is horrible. Let's see if we can change it now. Let's just leave it at that. Okay, so 2 cubed is 8 times by 2 is 16. Now, 
2 squared is 4 times by negative 3 is going to be negative 12. 2 times by 12 is going to be negative 24 plus n. Okay, so 16 minus 12 is going to be 4. Minus 24 is going to be minus 20. Take it over to the other side and we're going to get 17 is equals to n. Isn't that a thing of beauty? Now you may in the last line want to rewrite your final thing, just say, or your final formula. f of x is equals to 2, was our m value, x cubed minus 3x squared minus 12x plus 17. So in short, We've found the equation of a cubic function, or at least we've completed the equation of a cubic function, by using just the turning point. We found, well, we know that the gradient of the turning point is always equals to zero, and the way we find the gradient of the tangent to the line is by using the derivative. So we found the derivative of the function, then we made it equals to zero, and we substituted 2 in for x, and we found out what m was, and that made us smile. After that, we substituted it back into the function, where it was 2, and then used the whole of that point, because it is a point on the curve. So substitute 2, negative 3, of course negative 3 is your y value, so it goes over there, and then the 2 is your x value, so it goes into all of those brackets. Please remember to put the, when you substitute anything in, include the brackets. They will save you one day, I promise. And then we just simplified until we found the value of n. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we do that. Much love.